In 2017, Tesla's first attempt at a mass production electric vehicle, the Model 3, started rolling off the production line and began getting shipped to patient reservation holders. In typical Elon Musk fashion, much of the technology was downplayed and hidden within the vehicle, unbeknownst to new Tesla owners. However, just a year later, in 2018, car specialist Sandy Monroe decided to take apart a Model 3 and reveal to the public what he had found. Monroe had previously waved off the Tesla vehicle and disregarded it, but was encouraged by friends and colleagues to take a second look, and what he found was nothing less than stunning. Monroe tore down two Model 3s and compared them to other offerings from BMW and Chevy. He concluded that Tesla was ahead of the game in various areas, such as battery tech, their drivetrain, and their electronics. However, he had one major issue with the vehicle, which was the way the vehicle body was designed. The body was too heavy, complex, expensive, and difficult to manufacture. And I'm standing in front of the worst one right now. The body in white and the closures that go along with it are not designed for manufacturability. Sandy Monroe showed examples where Tesla's wheel well had nine parts instead of one. The more bits and pieces you got, the more complexity you've got, the more opportunity you've got for failure. There were many different types of welds and fastening methods. According to Sandy, this vehicle body was completely unacceptable. In an interview with the LA Times, Monroe said, if the car was made somewhere else and Elon wasn't part of the manufacturing process, they would make a lot of money. They're just learning all the old mistakes everyone else made years ago. At the time, Monroe said he admires Tesla's technology, so he did send the company a free list of 227 suggested improvements, but still concluded that this body is their single biggest problem, Monroe said. It's killing them, and if Tesla had gotten the body right, he says, they would have clobbered the competition. Well, it appears that Elon Musk took note of this. Elon has always liked constructive criticism and runs his companies in a manner such that the best ideas are the ones that win, no matter where they come from, be it from the CEO himself, or an intern, or from someone like Sandy Monroe. Tesla is striving to be the best manufacturing company in the world, and Elon Musk is fed up with being insulted and having Tesla criticized for its vehicle quality. This is why Tesla has decided to step up their body design to the next level, not just catching up with other OEMs, but to create a leapfrog product that will put them years ahead of the competition. In Tesla's new vehicles, starting with the Model Y at their Giga Berlin factory in Germany, Tesla will revolutionize body and battery engineering. The new body is made up of two giant Giga castings, one for each of the front and rear, and a central battery pack whereby the battery pack itself supports the structure of the vehicle. This new design alone will save 370 parts, will reduce mass by 10%, and in turn will add up to 14% to the vehicle's range. But these Giga castings themselves are not really the product that Tesla is making. As Elon Musk stated multiple times before, the product is the Gigafactory, and Tesla is bringing new machinery to the world of automotive manufacturing with something called the Gigapress. The Gigapress is a high-pressure aluminum die-casting machine manufactured by an Italian company called Idra that has already made its way to every one of Tesla's four Gigafactories worldwide. Giga Shanghai has at least three of these machines, two are installed in California, and Giga Berlin and Giga Austin each have at least one machine that is intended to start producing these large Giga castings once these factories come online by the end of this year. Idro was founded in 1946 and has a long history of producing die casting machines and other products. Their parent company is LK Technology Hong Kong, which has a similar business line to Idra. However, Idra says that they follow high-tech projects that require imported machines, whereas LK covers the rest of the markets. Elon Musk has previously mentioned that for the first two Giga casting machines that Tesla received, one came from Italy and the other from China. Idra does also operate its own subsidiary in China called Idra China. Tesla's Giga presses are custom orders from Idra and are some of the largest machines in the world. 6,000 tons of force for the Model Y casting machine, and Tesla has reportedly ordered an 8,000 ton machine for the Cybertruck. Now these are metric tons, so 1,000 kilograms, or about 2,200 pounds, and this 6,000 ton number is the clamping force of the machine, which we'll go over in more detail in a minute. 
the actual weight of the Giga Press itself is around 420 tons or 900,000 pounds. And just at Giga Berlin, Tesla's plans show that they aim to have eight of these machines. Each machine has a cycle time of about a minute and a half and can produce about a thousand castings per day. Also consider that there are different castings such as the rear underbody, the front, and whatever else Tesla has in store. But with eight 6,000 ton machines, and let's say two different Giga castings, one for the front and one for the rear, that's enough for 4,000 vehicles per day, or 28,000 per week, which works out to be an astounding 1.5 million vehicles a year. And as far as we know, this is just from Model Y at Giga Berlin. Tesla's Giga Press works as follows. At first, Tesla's custom aluminum alloy is melted down at 850 degrees Celsius. Any byproduct, such as aluminum oxide, is removed from the surface, and the liquid metal is moved through heated pipes into a warming oven at the same temperature. Various gases are used to prevent the formation of oxides and to remove any impurities. A robot then sprays the inside of the mold with a thin layer of oil so that the casting can later be easily removed. The mold is then clamped shut and a vacuum pumps out the air from inside which will help the liquid metal be evenly distributed in all areas. About 80 kilograms of molten metal is then pumped into the mold at a high speed of 10 meters per second or 22 miles per hour. It fills up the mold in about 60 to 100 milliseconds. This stable injection of metal and these strong clamping forces allow for larger castings and with thinner walls. A robot then removes the casting, which has already cooled to about 400 degrees Celsius, and places it into a quenching tank that further reduces the temperature to 50 degrees. Other machinery then cuts off excess aluminum and recycles it right away through a shredder and back into the smelter oven for use in upcoming castings. The final casting is x-rayed to verify the structure and computer measured for accuracy. It's then trimmed with a laser and drilled for fittings. And before I forget, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and check out our website themarketisopen.com where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years and it's all freely available. Now Sandy Monroe and his team have looked at Tesla's current mega castings found in the current Model Y and have analyzed the composition of the metal. It appears to be mainly aluminum and silicon, which Tesla uses to create an alloy that doesn't require further heat treatment, which could cause warping, but still has the necessary strength and durability that Tesla is seeking to achieve. The Model 3 originally had 70 parts for the rear underbody, which was later changed to two large mega castings held by two fasteners for the first generation Model Y. Presumably, Tesla will be using the same alloy in its larger Giga castings that join the entire rear underbody together, including the crash rails, into a single large casting. This is what's expected to come out of Giga Berlin. And Sandy Monroe loves this idea of casting huge single pieces. He says that he's suggested similar ideas for years, but in the typical auto industry, it's very difficult to get these new unconventional ideas to be taken seriously. On the other hand, Jerome Gillen, Tesla's president of heavy-duty trucking, who was instrumental in bringing the Model 3 to market, said in 2019 that Tesla will make full-size cars the same way that toy cars are made, which was reiterated by Elon Musk in 2021. Interestingly, the same comparison was made by the founder of Idra's parent company, LK Technology, who says that in 2019, Thanks to a North American automaker, they're honored to work towards the dream of making cars the same way that they make toy cars. Given that Jerome Gillen's mention of this coincides with the statement from Idra's parent company, and there aren't too many North American automakers, the breadcrumbs are pointing to Tesla working together with Idra to achieve this goal. That said, LK Technology has a 9,000 ton dream press, the largest die casting machine in the world, which appears to have been ordered by a customer other than Tesla. According to what was said at the Giga Press ceremony at LK's factory open day, they said, one of the loyal customers of LK, who has been using more than 200 units of LK machines, has ordered three sets of LK Giga Press die casting machines, which are 6,800 ton, 8,000 ton, and 9,000 ton. And so this begs the question, can anyone just order one of these machines from LK or Idra, which are effectively the same company, and simply copy Tesla's strategy of making giga castings to improve their own manufacturing process by cutting costs and speeding up production? I think that the answer is yes, but there are some hurdles. 
The machine that Tesla ordered is a custom machine that produces Tesla's custom part. Copying Tesla's exact part likely wouldn't be that useful for a different automaker's vehicle, but they can certainly try and reverse engineer Tesla's casting and adapt it to their own, or model their current structure that's made up of multiple pieces and design something that's one piece. Now Tesla does hold a patent for a multi-directional unibody casting machine. While Tesla's patents are open to competitors, Elon Musk's reasoning is that competitors will always be copying something old. For example, by the time this patent was even made public, it's already a year and a half later. And since Elon and the team at Tesla are focused on the pace of innovation, they're already onto the next thing or something new. This particular patent also suggests that Tesla may use the Gigapress for the frame of the vehicle, other parts, and eventually build most of the car with just a few large pieces. Currently, at the upcoming Giga Berlin Gigafactory, the entire chassis of the car will be done with three pieces. One thing that Sandy Monroe has repeated multiple times is that these mature automakers have a difficult time adding or accepting a new process into their manufacturing, which is why they still haven't done anything like this even till today. It's likely that some nimble Chinese automakers, who have already been copying Tesla as best they can, will be looking closely at what Tesla is up to with the Gigapress. Now besides the fact that Tesla has some patents around this concept, why doesn't Tesla just go and buy Idra, and if it's not for sale, then buy both LK Tech and Idra? As per LK's stock price, which is 13 billion Hong Kong dollars, or less than 2 billion US dollars, Tesla can easily afford to buy this company with cash on hand, or even by issuing shares. But I think this would be akin to Tesla buying a different one of their suppliers, such as why doesn't Tesla buy Panasonic for example, or Media Group, the company that makes the robots in Tesla's factories. First of all, Tesla doesn't actually need that many of these gigapresses, and once they have these machines installed, they're not being replaced very often. So outsourcing this seems like a better option, and it allows Tesla to more easily shift to a different method in the future. For example, if they had purchased the company that makes their robots, they would be hurting themselves by replacing a large number of robots with a single gigapress. So by not tying themselves down with a single investment, Tesla can be more nimble. Also, I think that if Idra moved very slowly and couldn't satisfy Tesla's requirements, or Tesla saw something that they could do even better or add to this system, then Tesla would likely start to make their own version of the gigapress, similar to how they've brought in-house technology where they felt suppliers couldn't keep up with their ambitions. They are making their own 4680 battery cells now, even though they're still partnered with Panasonic. So Tesla is essentially leaving their options open to shift to something else in the future by not buying Idra. At the same time, Tesla doesn't want to have to inherit all of Idra's other customers, which may not even be automotive related, and bring that into their business. Now one drawback of the Gigapress may be that a huge number of parts for vehicles depend on a small number of machines. If any of the machines go down for repairs or maintenance, it could affect the entire production line, unless Tesla can bring them back up quickly. One other concern about the Giga casting is that if the vehicle gets into a small accident, the entire car is a write-off. While this alone isn't so bad, because insurance would have to replace the vehicle, customers are concerned about rising insurance costs for Tesla vehicles. I think this is one reason why Tesla is focusing heavily on their own insurance product, which will help keep other companies in check. We have a detailed insurance video linked in the description. But Sandy Monroe has addressed this by saying that a small accident won't damage the Giga casting. You would have to hit the car hard enough to get to the Giga casting, and the Giga casting is quite strong. If such an accident were to occur that actually damaged the Giga casting, you should be quite happy that you're still alive. He drives the point home by saying that this will help save lives, which is the high order bid. Secondly, Elon Musk has said in the past that any damaged piece can be cut out and replaced. I think that in this case, you would essentially be left with patchwork similar to how the cars are designed today with many different pieces joined together. So structural integrity would likely be reduced, but at a much lower cost than writing off the entire vehicle. Overall, Tesla's Gigapress is being integrated into all of its factories worldwide as the next generation of automotive manufacturing and will allow for cheaper and lighter cars with more range. The Gigapress will be crucial for helping Tesla increase its production output and build high quality, high precision electric vehicles. Well, let me know in the comments what you think about Tesla's Gigapress and where you see Tesla taking this into the future. If you learned something new, please hit the like button and subscribe. We'd super appreciate that. Be sure to check out our latest videos on the economics of the Model Y and on Tesla's Powerwall Plus and Solar. 
A huge shout out to our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.